Uh, hello viewer, welcome back to Artistry. My name is Tyrus Wanyoike. So we continue with our, with our topic and today we are looking at power tools. We may as well look at some hand tools in the midst of that. Uh, last time we discussed the battery screwer and we said the screwer has quite a number of functions but the special purpose with it is that it can serve you where there is no power. It can serve you in places where there is no power supply. It can serve you uh, in a place even in the, in, uh, where there, when there is a power blackout. So it is important to have this battery screwer around you and to have it in home or in your workplace. So today I want us to focus on the power drill. It has a cord, unlike the, the battery screwer. So this one has no battery. It has a cord to connect it to the power. So once we connect it to the power, we'll be able now to draw power from the mains. And then we'll be able to handle all the functions of the power drill. So as you see it, this part is called the chuck. The chuck uh, ahead here will be used to hold the bit, the drilling bits or the screwing bit. The bit will be fitted into the, the jaws inside here. Then it will be tightened. And we have this other uh, part here that we call the key, the chuck key. It has one, one long side, and one short side, then it has some uh, teeth, if I may call them, to fit into this chuck here and tighten. So we want to fit a bit, we'll do it practically. We have a bit here that we call the engineering bit. The engineering bit is used with this drill, or even with the battery screwer. It is used to drill into wood, or even metal. It can drill into either wood or metal, so you have to be very particular what you are, you are drilling. Anything apart from wood and metal and other uh, materials of that nature, it might not work, especially in concrete. You don't use this in concrete. We have a bit for concrete work. So this one will be used to drill into wood. We can even drill one hole here after fitting it. So we we'll open the jaws here and then fit the feet the bit here, and then I'll hold one part, and then I'll close this other part. I'll close it to where my hand can be able to close. And then the other bit, I'll use the chuck key. Up to there, now I can close, and then I use the chuck key. I insert it into one of these holes, and then turn it a little bit, turn it a little bit. I make sure it is tight. It is now tight, it cannot come out. Now it is well fixed. Now the, the drill has a, an engineering bit uh, in the front part of it on the chuck. It is well tightened. Then I know my drill bit is seven millimeters. So I'll drill a hole that is seven millimeters on the piece of wood. So I'll connect it now to the mains. And then I will use it to drill as we see its other functions. So it's now connected to the mains. And I'll put it on. Now it can turn can turn now, so it means it is ready for use. Now, <coughs> on top here, we have this control on the drill. This control has one side that has a hammer-like uh, icon, and then we have a drilling bit icon on this other side. So this control, once you put the switch on this side, it will drill without the hammering action. And this is what we use to drill into wood and metal. This side, which has no hammer. 
the hammer side is this side. So if you want to drill into wood or into metal, you use this uh, switch, switched this side where there is no hammer. So that the hammering effect will not be there. Then we will be able to drill. Uh, from there, we have the switch. The switch is well made and regulated in a way that once I press just a little bit of it, it will give me a slow speed. Slow speed. Once I increase, I press more, it will give me more speed. I press more, it will give me more speed. And finally, that is the maximum speed. Once I press it like that, now it is moving maximum. So it's not in many cases that we may use the drill in the maximum speed. So we just regulate the speed as we drill. If we need more power, as, as the drill bit gets deeper, it may require more strength because it is, it is, it, it is getting in more into the wood. So you increase a little bit of speed. You increase regulating the speed as you continue. Then we have this button here. So this switch is here and this button is also here. If I want now the drill to go full speed and I don't have to hold the switch, I will hold and press and then press this one in, release the switch and then release this one. Now it will keep running until I press the, 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 the switch again. So it will keep running, running, running full speed until I press the handle once, or, or rather the switch. I press the switch once and then it will release this one. So this one is for continuous rotation. Uh, from here we have uh, another control here that reflects in both sides. We have it both here and also both here. When this one is up here, the other one is down. So the, when, when this other one is, is down, then on the, on the other side it will be up. So that one is used to control the rotation, clockwise or anti-clockwise. You want to reverse it, you take it to this direction here. You press it, or uh, rather you turn it down here, and then it shows an arrow showing the backward direction here. This one shows the forward direction. On the other side, up here, we will have the backward direction. Because once we turn it, it will turn that one will come up, this one will go down, and vice versa also as we turn it the other side. So this one is for reversing and, and forward motion. Then we have this one as a switch, control it when we are, we are going full talk of, of full speed. And then we have the chuck and we have the hammer part of it. Now on this switch, the hammer side of this switch is used when we are dri drilling into uh, into concrete wall. If we are drilling into concrete wall, then we fit a special bit for that. A special bit. This part is a bit. The bit we we, we take the chuck, we open this uh, rather we take the chucky, we open the chuck, and then we move this bit and fit a mason masonry bit that is able to drill into the wall, and then turn this. Uh, this uh, switch uh, into the hammer, the hammer side, then we'll be able to drill into, into wood, uh, into, into concrete. So this is the power drill. Many of us have it. We have seen it. We may, uh, may have access to it, but now if you don't have basic information on what purpose it is for, then it might not help you. And it is so important in drilling of holes the bit can hold uh, the chuck can hold a bit up to 12 millimeters inside here but the other special bits that would be more than 12 millimeters where it is cutting but here the diameter here is about 10 so 10 will fit into uh, into the machine and then outside here outside to outside here the diameter in this case, is 35 millimeters. 35 millimeter, uh, this one we call it the Faustner bit. Faustner bit. The Faustner bit is used to drill into wood. 
especially in cabinet work. In cabinet work, we use this bit to fit uh, some hardware device or other hardware uh, that we call the malpha hinges. The malpha hinges have examples of malpha hinges. Let me return the chucky where it is supposed to be. And then I uh, have a packaged malpha key, malpha hinge, sorry, See, not malpha key, malpha hinge. So I'll open the malpha hinge. Oops, sorry. I'll open the malpha hinge and then uh, there is a package for screws here. There is an, a cover, a cover, and then we have the, the malpha hinge itself. So the hinge is quite detailed. So it has a very good mechanism on the, on the back side of it. It has a very good mechanism uh, with the hydraulic part. You can look carefully at that center part. It has a hydraulic system. So as the hinge is used, the door will close in a very slow motion. The hydraulic path will swing into action. It will be seen clearly as the door closes. So there are others without that part, but this one is a, is a hydraulic malpha hinge. So that is what it is called. You may, you may wonder why sometimes some cabinets will close in slow motion. Others will bang and others will just uh, you just have to push the door until you close yourself. So that is the, the secret on the fittings, especially in the cabinet work. So this is a malpha hinge. You can see it's quite detailed. So if the next time you go now to your, to your stores and they tell you now you have to cough a little bit more for the malpha hinge because it's a hydraulic hinge, you understand the, the, the concept behind the malpha hinge. So the malpha hinges come in different, uh, in different functions. This one has the hydraulic part. Once I'm closing it, you will realize that it will, it will close very slowly. It will close slowly until it gets the door to its position. So the malpha hinge also has controls here. This one is used to push the door forward. This one. This one is used to, put, uh, to push the door sideways. So we we'll have to, to adjust the malpha hinge until the door fits very well where we want it to be. If we want it to go a little bit up, then we control with this. If we want it to go to come forward a little bit, perhaps it's not closing well, then we regulate it with this. And then on the other side, we will screw it. So we will see that in a short while once we get to the... Uh, to the the doing part of it we're going to get to the practical part of it so the part that we drill for with this 35 millimeter bit is this part here the diameter that will accommodate this part because it will go into the into the piece uh, let's say we have this piece which is going to be our door then the malpha hinge will go there so for that part that will get into it has to get inside because it has a depth. So for you to recess for that, then we use the 35 millimeter first and a bit. So we have discovered that we can use this drill even for large bits, provided the part that the chuck is holding, it is about 10 um, and a maximum of 12 millimeters in diameter here. Other bigger drills will have a bigger allowance for that, but this is meant to protect the motor of the drill. Because if you overload the motor with so much load uh, uh, ahead here, once you are drilling, then the, the motor will die or it will just fail. So to avoid many problems, then this machine is rated only for light and medium duty purposes. We have other big drills for, with more power, and those ones will be used now for the, for the activities that will require more power. So we can either use this bit, the Forstner bit, especially for the cabinet work. We have other bits which may either be small, like this one. This one now has a different color. You can see it is a bit shiny. 
we have this other one that I have put into the power drill. It's a bit dark, so they will come in different colors, in different sizes. So the quality also will matter. So this one may last a little longer when it is a bit sharp than uh, this one, or depending on the company that has supplied it. So that is the use of the power drill. And once you get to, to know the right use of these tools, it will give you a very nice time because uh, they will last long. They will, you, you, you accomplish your purposes very fast uh, as compared to the manual part of the machine. So the machines should be taken good care of. Only qualified and knowledgeable personnel should handle these machines because however good they are, they will take a short time if you don't understand the right and the proper use of these machines. So combining and putting together now with the hand tools, you're able to do, to do a task in a very convenient way. So from there, I want us to see a little bit of uh, the holding tools. Some we had discussed other time, and here we have a clamp. When we want to use the clamp, especially when we are using the machine, the machine will require you to hold it with both, both hands. Both hands. The machine should be held in, with both hands. So uh, I'll put my piece of work, that's what I'm calling, going to call it, and then I'll, I'll hold it with the F clamp. This clamp resembles letter F. So we call it the F clamp. Uh, it has a very good foot here to make sure we don't put scratch and, and dents on these bench, benches as we use it. And also the upward part here is quite flat. So I'll use it to hold my piece of work and then tighten it from down there. I can still use another one on this other side. Uh, so I will pull it. Once I'm pulling it, it can move easily. Unlike the G clamp that many of us know, where you have to turn the, the, the screw until it gets to where you want. This one you can regulate with the, with the arm, either to take it down or up. It has a spring, it's spring loaded here. Once you, you release it there, it will not go down. But if you, you lift it from down there, it will move. It's spring loaded here. So I'll just pull it down and then take it up and screw a little bit down there. Now with that little screwing or rather holding, the, the piece is very firm. I cannot remove it here. I can even move the whole bench and it will not, it will not move an inch. So it is now well clamped and for small holes, I can use the battery screwer. Uh, the battery screwer will fit the bit just as we have fitted, uh, fitted it on the, on the power drill. I'll fit it there. And then the chuck has two parts. There is this part and this part. So I'll hold this part and then tighten this other part. And now the drill cannot come out. And then I'll turn it in the forward gear to move forward. And then I'll turn the switch here to number two because I'm, I'm drilling. And then I'll hold it upright upright both from this direction and also from this direction. So I'll make sure it is completely upright. Then I'll hold it with both of my hands. That is why I clamped the piece. And then I can turn uh, gently uh, and then remove the shavings, clean them from here, continue, remove them. Now I have a hole going this deep up to here I have a hole going that deep if my screw no, my, my my bit was longer it could even go through the whole piece and you can see how conveniently i'm doing it so that is the that is the convenience of a power tool if i need the the hole to be a bit bigger uh, i will remove the bit and then fit a bigger bit here this one is now bigger and for big holes, we will use 
a small bit fast to pilot. We call it piloting. Now that I have piloted here, I can be able now to use the big bit conveniently without struggling and straining the machine. Uh, so I don't struggle with I don't struggle with the bit. There is no high chance of breaking it, and also I'm working conveniently. So it's important also to remove the 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 the, the, the wood shavings that are getting clogged into this bit for convenience because if they are so full here and the bit cannot bite anymore then they, it will start generating a lot of heat and from there we may have to mess up either the bit or the 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 motor in the machine so it's important to know how to go about these things because if we are not careful then the machine will not work the bit will become blunt and we will say the bit was a poor quality and so we we, we, we end up failing because we don't have the right use of the machine. So we have demonstrated the use of this machine in drilling. Then we'll come to screwing in a short while. So for now, we'll go for a break. And then once we come back, we'll see the, the how to go about screwing. Screwing so that we can get the maximum results from this machine when we are drilling or rather when we are screwing or joining two pieces of uh, wood together. So don't go far. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you.